Hi, I'm Chris Eggert from Eggert and Hessling uh, Attorneys at Law. And in this video, I'm going to introduce you to the basics of a child support calculation. Now, most anybody who's in a divorce or a child custody case, either at the beginning of that case or years down the road, is going to need to know if their child support, uh, the number is correct or needs to be changed uh, or what the possibilities are. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to walk you through how to estimate what your child support ought to be using the tools that are available to the public. Now, as with anything else, every situation is unique. This is not intended as legal advice, and I strongly encourage you, after you've watched this video, to contact an attorney such as me to talk about the details of your case, and so we can make sure that your child support calculation is as accurate as possible. Now to start off with, you're going to need to know a few things before you begin to do your child support calculation. Of course, you're going to need to, need to know um, who has custody of the children, um, who is going to have the majority of the parenting time, and what percentage allocation of time with the children uh, there is, what your incomes are, if there are any other children that need to be factored in for child support, any spousal support payments, union dues, health insurance cost, and that's the premium that's not just for the child, but also for yourself, what your own health insurance premium is if you have to have your own insurance to get your child insured. Daycare costs are another factor, um, veterans benefits and social security benefits. You've got to have all that information put together and probably the best place to get that information from, put it all in one consolidated package, is from a uniform support declaration. Now I'm going to put on my headset and start guiding you through the websites and the tools that are available to gather this information and put, a, put it together into a child support calculation that you can use as a starting point for your negotiations and considering what to do next with your case. All right, so the first thing you're going to need to do is gather your information together. And like I said, the best place to do that is on a form called a Uniform Support Declaration. And you can find one of those at the court's website, which in Oregon is courts.oregon.gov. And on that website, you go to Materials and Resources tab. And down toward the middle of the screen, there's a tab for court forms. Click on that. And then scroll down to the statewide forms. Click on Family Law Forms. And within the Family Law Forms, there is a packet called Miscellaneous Forms. It's packet 6. And inside here, Packet 6F, the Uniform Support Declaration. If you open that up, you can save the PDF file or print it out. And here it just walks you through step by step the number, the number of children you've got, how old they are, if there's any of them attending school as an 18, 19, or 21 year old, how much money you make, and from what sources, from employment or otherwise, if you're receiving any public benefits or veterans or social security benefits, what your health insurance costs are, what those are for the children, because sometimes they're the same and sometimes they're different, daycare expenses, the parenting schedule that's being followed, and the number of overnights, and that's real critical for your child support calculation, is knowing how many overnights on a two-year average the children spend with you every year. Presumably they spend the rest of the time with the other parent. Most of the time you're not going to have to deal with the last couple of pages of the Uniform Support Declaration. Those deal with expenses that can be used in what's called a rebuttal. And most people are not going to be interested in a, re in a rebuttal calculation, at least at this stage. Okay, okay, now that we've got our information put together from the Uniform Support Declaration, let's turn to the OregonChildSupport.gov website and start putting together our child support calculation. Now, as a reminder, we're going to keep a very basic child support scenario here. John and Mary are the parents of two children, Bob and Jane. John has gone on and had a new relationship and another child as part of that relationship that he's supporting. 
He earns $5,000 a month. Mary stays at home with the children, although she's capable of working, so we're going to presume that she could get out and at least earn minimum wage in the state of Oregon. John pays Mary $500 a month spousal support. He has $65 a month in union dues. He has a very generous local rural parenting plan with their children. Uh, here in Marion County, that would give him just under 30% of the overnights per year. He pays $150 a month for his own health insurance. It costs him another $125 per month for the children's health insurance. And there's no daycare expense for the children. All so right, so to back to lab. Google. And now we're going to go to the Oregon Division of Child Support's website. That is oregonchildsupport.gov. We'll go to that home page. And over on the left-hand side of the screen, there's a Resources tab. Once you click on that and the child support calculator, click on it, scroll down, and in the middle of the screen is a button for Go to Guidelines Calculator. Click on that and the calculator will begin. Now remember we're using John and Mary, and Mary's stay-at-home mother to the children, so they're spending most of the time with her. So therefore John is listed as the first parent and the father, and Mary is the second parent and defined as the mother. We'll click on the Next button. John, being a plumber, good working job, is earning $500 a month, sorry, $5,000 a month. Mary is presumptive minimum wage because she's capable of going out into the workforce. And so the state says you're capable of making that minimum wage whether you actually do or not. She's owed $500 a month spousal support by John, and John pays it to her. So there's a subtraction from his income in addition to hers. He pays mandatory union dues of $65 a month. And John has the non-joint child. Next, we come to the first children's screen. Because he has a pretty good, a generous local rural parenting plan from Marion County, we'll say yes, there is a written agreement for parenting time. There are children Bob and, oops, not Bob and Sam, Bob and Jane. Click on Next. You see Bob and Jane right now are assumed to be 100% with their mother. We know that's not the case. This is why we told the computer we were going to enter a parenting agreement. So we click on that Entering Parent Time Percentages. Marion County Supplemental Local Rule is about 29.75% of the time and 70.25% of the time for Mary. Different, lo different local rules and different parenting schedules may vary. Sometimes you have to sit down with the, with the uh, calendar and go through it and chart out two years worth of parenting time and divide it up and see where the numbers actually fall. Click Apply, and we see now that we do have a parenting time credit in this calculation. That's going to have a pretty substantial impact on the support. It's going to make child support payment a lot smaller for John than it otherwise would be. So we're going to click on Next. Now there are no child care costs because Mary's a stay-at-home mother. There is health insurance. John is going to pay for that. His health insurance premium is 150 bucks a month. The cost for the children. Let's look that up. What? Is 125. And we'll see what that does. Click on next. And now we see that John has a cash child support obligation of $617 per month and a cash medical support of $142 per month for a total of 759. We're going to skip the rebuttal screen because we're keeping this simple. So click on that next. And you can see this is how child support shakes out. Again, John is 617 a month plus 142 for cash medical. Now the way it works with cash medical support is that if John has that medical support available for the kids, that medical insurance available for the kids, costing him less than $142 per month. And remember, in this case, the kids only cost $125 for theirs. That he has to provide that health insurance and would not be paying the cash medical support in most cases. So what Mary could expect to receive is $617 a month child support. 
You can view and print your worksheets over here. And that's what you would print out and attach to any motion that you would file with the court or even to a judgment if you've reached a point in your case where you need to have a judgment filed. And that's a basic child support calculation. All right, so now that we have completed a child support calculation, feel free to go to OregonChildSupport.gov and try it for yourself. Remember to keep things really simple and you'll get through the calculation, have a basic idea of what you can do, what your options are. And then please be sure to come talk to an attorney, somebody that who has experience with more complex situations, which nearly everybody actually has. and. Uh, get that consultation done and get some professional help with putting together a detailed child support calculation before you go file anything with the court. All right, again, this is Chris Eggert with Eggert & Hesslinga. Please feel free to call me at 503-837-6111 to set up a consultation or send me an email. If you just have a couple of questions, I'll be happy to talk with you. Thank you.